Hey up, welcome to this week's video. Uh, as you can see, I'm not out and about in the field. I'm in the office this week. If I've got my timings right, you should be seeing this in the gap between uh, Christmas and New Year. So, so Merry Christmas to you all. I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Now, some of you may know that I do a charity calendar every year. In fact, some of you may have purchased it. So yeah, I've been doing this for the last few years. Uh, sadly, I lost one of my one of my best friends and one of my great uh, photography pals um, a few years ago now. And ever since, I've done a, can, a calendar for cancer uh, research uh, with the profits going to that charity. So I thought I'd talk you through some of the images. Um, I've sold out now, so um, yeah, um, some of you won't have actually seen these images. Or if you have purchased a calendar, perhaps you'd like to know a little bit more about each image for each month. So uh, yeah, let's work our way through them. And uh, we'll start with the front cover. So yeah, this first shot is of the uh, heather at over our tar in the peak district national park now this shot was a bit of a disaster if i'm being honest the plan was to get up onto the tops um shoot across over to carl walk the old uh, iron age hill fort unfortunately when i got up there it was absolutely blowing a gale um but luckily i managed to get this shot and uh, when it was more sheltered down down in the valley uh, down much closer to the car park as you're walking up through the woodland the light was stunning shining through the trees and the blooms were so vibrant it just yeah luckily i managed to capture this so that's my front cover well my january image is probably the most uh, poignant and the most personal to me in this calendar it actually shows the tree up at windskill stones nature reserve at, in the yorkshire dales i like to call this gator's tree um gator or graham um gator being his nickname was my friend who sadly passed away and uh, this was a place we used to go quite regularly it's a, a real uh, favorite place of his and uh, we're we, uh, we actually scattered some of his ashes there at that tree as well. So it means a lot to me. It's popular with a lot of photographers because it really is a stunning location. But uh, yeah, it has its own personal uh, personal meaning to me. On this actual shoot, I was uh, with another photographer. I was uh, with Dave Peck, who, you, if you follow my channel, uh, you've, you've seen that we've uh, met up a few times and done quite a few shoots together. Um, and if not, uh, I do urge you to pop over to his channel and subscribe. He's, uh, yeah, he's a good fellow and he does some uh, fantastic photography. Uh, we were blessed that that evening actually the the light although it didn't quite kick off to be the most stunning sunset ever it just had a, a nice bank of moody clouds and just that nice little glow on the horizon so i think it really sets off the location nicely uh, yeah i think we were really lucky now february is from one of my uh my many uh, october road trips up to scotland um any photographer is going to know this location it's been done <laughs> it's been done to death you've got to remember i sell these calendars to people who aren't, aren't photographers so to them this is uh well it, as it is to everybody it's a stunning stunning location it is of course uh buccaletted more it's no wonder it's an absolute mud bath when you get there and uh, all those tripod holes or so many photographers have been there but what a location had to get that shot and i've had to include it in my calendar uh in fact i've taken that shot so many times i'm surprised i think this is the third third or fourth calendar i've done and uh i'm surprised it's taken so long for me to to put it in there but Yep, there it is, and it's uh, looking magnificent as always. So on to March, and uh, yeah, I, I managed to get uh, this picture of this heron. I sort of went all wildlife photographer. Um, I wasn't actually out on a on a, on a landscape photography uh, adventure or anything like that. I was, I was just on a bit of a family holiday. I had my camera in my backpack, and uh, as we were walking along, just just a nice uh, scenic walk along the river. Um, it's in Betis Akoid in Snowdonia. Uh, we saw we saw this photographer, big long lens out. I thought, well, what's he taking a picture of? And uh, yeah, there it was. This this heron was just absolutely stone still in the middle of the river. In fact, it's so still. I think this is a two two three second exposure. Might be longer actually. I have to check the details. But it's we're absolutely stone still. So it's pin sharp. But I managed to get that smooth silky water. Um, yeah. Well, my April image. Uh, we're back in England, and uh, on this for this image, I was actually on my way up to the uh, Lake District National Park. We stopped off at T Bay Services uh, just for a quick bite to eat and quick pee stop. And uh, yeah, I, I'm a bit of a obsessive for looking at Google Maps and trying to find locations. And uh, I spotted one a while back, slightly to the east of uh, T Bay, um, a place called Rutter Force. And I just thought, yeah, today's the day. We'll, we'll take that detour. I think it's a 15, 20 minute detour. We'll, we'll go give it a look. Um, it was sort of late spring sunshine, quite bright, quite vibrant, but it really made those colours pop. And uh, it's almost got a tropical feel. So yeah, quite a nice image this. I quite like it, and uh, yeah, had to wade into the middle of the middle of the river there and uh, to get those shots. So it was definitely a a, a wellies on uh, shoot was this one. 
Right, so it's May and uh, we're in Cornwall this time. And this is a place called Roach Rock, which uh, is an old hermitage. I think it was actually used as a leper colony as well at, at one stage. It's just built into this rock. It's like something out of Game of Thrones. It was absolutely dead. There was only us there. Uh, I thought I think we saw one other person in all the time we were there. Uh, and we were lucky enough that we had these uh, these storm clouds blowing across. When we first arrived, it was sort of blue skies, few white fluffy fluffy clouds. And but then over to the right, you could just see these um, these storm clouds blowing across. Uh, yeah, we sort of just uh, played a bit of a waiting game. I just thought those moody clouds would really really set off this location. Uh, and the other thing, uh, uh, there was a, a load of crows that just uh, kept taking off, circling around, landing, circling around, landing and repeating. They just kept doing that. Uh, and actually, <laughs> I've been accused of photoshopping the crows in. On this image, I've actually photoshopped them out. There were so many, it, it, it looked a bit it looked a bit false. It looked a bit, um, yeah, too, too, too uh, horror film. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I should have saved this one for October, for Halloween. Uh, but yeah. Really moody, atmospheric place, and uh, yeah, that light really, really did help. Back in Scotland for for June, and this is the Fairy Bridge of Glen Creran. So there's another one that's absolutely full of atmosphere. Yeah, it, it's it's only really got this one subject, but ah, oh, what a, what a stunning subject it is. And you can get down to the water's edge. So there's lots of lots of little compositions you can get um, down at the water's edge, up on the on the banks either side. Now I've always gone to um, Castle Stalker when I'm up in Scotland. But it's always, to me, been a little bit of a, a location on its own. I've never really found anything else in the immediate vicinity. This is very, very close, sort of a 10-minute drive away. So once I found this, again, it was a little search on uh, on Google Earth and on Google Maps. And uh, once I found this, I, had, I just had to visit. Really glad I did. Definitely going to be going back. Uh, in fact, I've already penciled it in for my next trip, which is in February. So definitely going to be going back to this place. So we jump in from north to south again. This is the bottleneck uh, engine houses, the crown engine houses in, in Cornwall. It's a classic location. Um, in this instance, we went at sunset. Uh, the seas weren't overly dramatic, and uh, I actually just took a long, I think it's a two-minute exposure, just out of experimentation, just out of curiosity. I didn't expect to use this shot, or if I did, maybe I might blend this into another shot. It turns out this is actually the image I, I, I like the most, and it's the one that I processed, and yeah. That lovely golden light on those, on those uh, stone stone towers on those engine houses. Oh, beautiful place. Really enjoyed being there. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to heights. I get quite a bit of vertigo. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't prepared to walk out. There's a, there's a the rocky ledge that leads out, out into the... Well, you can see it on the left-hand side, the, the, the bit of headland there on the left-hand side. Yeah, there were some photographers there. There was no way I was going to walk out there. It's, uh, yeah, Yeah, my vertigo would definitely be kicking in walking along there. I think this might be the only Norfolk image that made it into my calendar. But we're down there being shown around by Dave Peck. Great guy, he returned the favour. I'd showed him around the Yorkshire Dale. So, yeah, he invited me down to Norfolk and we had a great couple of days of photography. This is actually a, a sunrise image at Craster on Sea. And uh, it's to the sea defences. And there's a little bit of haze in the air. Um, but I just like the, the, the sort of ethereal look of this image. And, uh, yeah, sort of a, a, it's a blend of a, a, a two-minute long exposure for the, the sea in the, in the background. Uh, and I think I did a long, uh, short one or two second uh, exposure for that that water in the foreground, just to get that that texture uh, movement in the foreground. That's a, um, a technique I use quite a lot actually when I do seascapes. It's uh, just something I, I find quite pleasing. Well, September's image. Well, this is uh, this is Glencoe Locken. Uh, yeah, obviously up in Glencoe. This were a bit of a fateful uh, photography shoot with this. Um, I was out with the boss and she uh, manages, managed to drop her Z6 and 24 200mm lens. Yeah, straight into the drink, uh, straight into the murky waters of the lock. Uh, managed to fish it out, but uh, didn't manage to get, ever get it working again. It, uh, yeah, it was uh, absolutely, absolutely goosed. So uh, I don't really want to talk much more about that shoot, if I'm being honest. Um, it's in the calendar and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Well, we're well and truly into autumn now. Um, we're at Rydal Water for this October image. Uh, it goes against my usual style. I normally go for the bigger bigger vistas. That's more, more my kind of landscape photography. But the waters were so choppy, the wind had picked up, and uh, I just weren't getting any reflections. It looked quite messy with, the, with, with the, the scrappy water. And I just found this little pool, this little area that was all reflective, just in front of this lovely autumn, this old, this old twisty oak and these, these great colours. So, yeah... Managed to get this image and uh, a little bit different for me, but hopefully you like this one. 
another absolutely stunning autumn day for this uh, for this shoot for November. I'm up at Invermoriston on the shores of Loch Ness. Uh, I'm just on the main road bridge. Um, millions of tourists will have taken this shot, but wow, I couldn't resist. You've got that lovely summer house, that folly. Those colours are so vibrant. It was if it were well, like the trees were on fire. Uh, absolutely glowing. Uh, absolutely love this show. In fact, just spent well spent a good couple of hours just wandering around in that, that bit of woodland there that you can see. Great place. Uh, if you're ever up there in in, in autumn, I, I hope you get those colours. I highly highly recommend it. Great place to just stop off on on your tour. And lastly, we've got. Uh, a shot from North Wales, looking across at Snowdon, um, or Aruri, I think it's, we pronounce it in Welsh, it's, it's reverted back to its Welsh name. Yeah, this is from the, the Pinnacles at Capel Curig. Um, this is a location I absolutely adore. It's, a, it's only a small hike, really, to just get these stunning views um, down the valley over the lakes. Uh, and although this is the December shot, this was actually, this was actually taken uh, in January. I think it was the 4th of January. Uh, we'd had a bit of snow, and I just thought, you know what? Uh, and snow down here it's two and a half hours three hours from 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 home it's you know it's easily doable in a day uh, even in the, the shorter winter months I can, I can do it I can, I can you know if i if i put my mind to it i can i can i can make that trip and uh yeah i think i think i've got a bit stir crazy during the christmas break and i just needed to get out so yeah this is a resulting image uh as i say absolutely love this place uh, i've got a lovely sunset shot in in summer as well um uh, that didn't make it into the calendar, but it was a, it were a close call because I really do like that place. Right then, I hope you enjoyed that quick whistle stop tour through those uh, those images. If you're one of the people who purchased my calendar, and I, hopefully that put a little bit of meat on the bones as to where I was, a little bit of detail as to what it took to capture those images. I've completely sold out this year of the calendars, so uh, keep an ear out. September, October, November next year, I'll be taking pre-orders for, for the year after. And uh, yeah. So it's just down to me to say uh, Happy New Year and uh, all the best. I'll see you in 2024.